For the past decade, I've been conducting research into how people interact with information. At first, I was interested in how they seek information as part of their everyday work activities. But over the years, my interests have broadened. I have not only looked at how people actively seek information, but also how they more passively discover it. So my research to date has looked at how people interact with information in the context of their everyday activities, particularly their work tasks. This research has been conducted based on the ethos that a rich understanding of how people interact with information can help inform the design and improvement of electronic information resources, so that these resources better support users' information needs and behaviour. Myself and my students have interviewed and observed people in a number of different academic and practical domains, from librarianship to programming, and from law to architecture. This research has involved gaining a rich understanding of users' information needs, tasks and behaviour in each of the various domains. Although we've often had different foci in each research project, in general we've investigated how people acquire information, not just by searching for it, but also by browsing and by receiving push-based information, such as email alerts. We've investigated how people interpret the information they've acquired, and in particular, how they use computer tools to support them in this process, for example by structuring documents to facilitate easy information extraction. We have also investigated how people use the information they have acquired, usually as part of the process of document creation. The aim of my research has always been to inform design in some way, either by making suggestions for how new digital information resources can be designed, based on an enriched understanding of users' information behaviour or how information resources can be improved based on this understanding. The methods I've employed have been typically straightforward but have demanded an element of craft skill. I've conducted semi-structured interviews aimed at understanding particular aspects of information behaviour. For example, a master's student I co-supervise with my colleague Simon Ackfield examined how lawyers keep up to date with the law in detail. We've also conducted naturalistic think aloud observations of people acquiring, interpreting and using information for their work. These were think alouds with a twist. I would always ask opportunistic, probing questions to get an understanding of what people were doing and why, similar to a contextual inquiry. Understanding how people use existing technology to support their work can be regarded as a cycle when new technology is developed based on an understanding of how people interact with information and in turn this new technology shapes future information interactions providing further opportunity for understanding how well the new technology supports users. Sometimes the design suggestions I've made are evolutionary where we hopefully see a gradual incremental improvement in the technology that's developed by it becoming easier to use, or by it supporting additional or more appropriate functionality. Sometimes the design suggestions I've made are revolutionary, inspired by users' current behaviour, but based on the projection of what users might need in future to support them. In this talk, I'll briefly tell you about some of the domains where I've tried to understand users' interaction with information. I'll tell you about some of the mostly evolutionary design suggestions that myself and my students have come up with, and I'll comment on how far I believe these suggestions have been taken up in practice. Then at the end I'll sum up by telling you what I hope to see from digital information resources of the near future. The first user group I studied were human-computer interaction and librarianship postgraduates. I aim to compare their mental models of physical and digital libraries, but actually found it was a little like comparing chalk and cheese. But I came up with several recommendations for improving the design of digital libraries. We recommended that digital libraries provide more scope for browsing between various aspects of metadata to help users locate work by the same author in the same conference proceeding or on the same broad topics. Digital libraries commonly provide this functionality now. Indeed, you can see that this functionality is provided in the current ACM digital library interface, 
if you have a look at the bottom right. We also noticed that users found it difficult to figure out why the digital library returned the particular search results that it did. One of our users was confused by what the relevance scale, which he called the pint of Guinness, circled, was actually telling him. We recommended greater transparency in how the user's search query had been taken into account when presenting the results. This is still something that digital information resources do badly, probably because it's difficult to convey this information to users without overcomplicating the interface. Why was it that the same search conducted several years ago yielded 29 results, and now, when presumably more relevant papers have been published, only 8 results are returned? We also suggested that electronic scholarly material be made accessible under one front end particularly because users found it so confusing to figure out whether or not they had access to the full text of documents and how to gain access to them if they did. Google Scholar has gone a long way towards solving this problem. There are many occasions where I'm working from home where I can simply click on a Google Scholar hit, sign into my university single sign-on system and immediately access the PDF of a paper. But this isn't always the case. And still, Sometimes it's difficult to find out whether I've got access to a document. Next, we interviewed and observed academic and practicing lawyers and identified a number of distinct information behaviours that they performed, like searching, browsing, and monitoring, maintaining an awareness of development. These behaviours covered not only their information seeking activities, but also their information interpretation and use activities. We made suggestions for how digital law libraries could better support these behaviours. We recommended that forwards chaining behaviour, finding out subsequent documents that have cited or otherwise been mentioned, was made easier to achieve, as there seemed to be inconsistency in digital law libraries. Some case reports listed when a particular case had been subsequently applied by a judge in order to make a future decision, and others did not. This British Airways Employment Tribunal, for example, is not mentioned in any of the cases which were applied to come to a decision. But we also recommended other things that have been improved in digital law libraries in general. Browsing is now much more prominent and accessible functionality in many digital libraries, not just legal ones. Architects and urban designers display completely different information behaviour to the lawyers. They were often not only looking for information, but for, in for inspiration at the same time. And this was both a driver of and a sore outcome of their information seeking. Searching for images was particularly important when undertaking practical design projects. Many users only read the text of sites where a thumbnail in a Google Images search had intrigued them. We recommended that thumbnails of images be provided alongside search results to support them in their image-led searches. This functionality has recently been implemented by Google. We also recommended that it should be possible to browse for images or video with a similar style, format or content. This is something which Google also now supports, albeit with limited selection attributes. There is still potential to implement many of our suggestions though, such as providing architects and urban designers with the functionality to categorise, rate or tag web pages, images or documents, and to view and share material that's been categorised, rated or tagged by others, such as their colleagues. Student projects that I've supervised have also looked at information behaviour in other little studied disciplines. Angela Kunku, for example, looked at how programmers select web services standardised ways of integrating web-based applications. She found that existing web service discovery resources were poor at supporting programmers in making informed selections, mainly because they provided little metadata to help them form an opinion on whether a particular service was likely to be useful in the context of their current programming project. It was also difficult to test run particular services. Angela made suggestions for improving these tools for example, by always providing testable code in a standardised format and supporting the online testing of this code. However, I'm not aware of any new digital resources that have made service selection any easier yet. 
Another student of mine, Andrew Georgiou, focused specifically on how government policy workers use the information that they've acquired to prepare policy scrutiny documents and reports. He identified three broad categories of the document creation process, file management, writing and editing, and review and sign-off. We made several design suggestions for an integrated information acquisition and use environment that would support this process. We suggested that this integrated environment might provide users with functionality that allows them to manage and refine source documents by linking them to the document currently being written, by indexing source as well as authored documents, and by allowing documents to be tagged, highlighted, annotated and searched. There are existing digital information resources that have gone a long way to implementing aspects of this functionality. For example, Mendeley on the left allows users to highlight and annotate PDFs of papers and share these annotated documents with others, but it does not allow users to author documents directly from within the Mendeley interface. Whereas Simon Atfield's News Harvester prototype on the right allows users to search for documents, extract information from them, and use this information to support a writing task in one split-screen interface but there's still lots more potential for future digital information seeking environments to also incorporate information use functionality. I am currently working on a large project called Serena, which has involved me asking researchers from a variety of disciplines to give me examples of how they've come across information serendipitously, i.e. with the involvement of unexpectedness and insight and leading to a valuable outcome. We plan to use a richer understanding of serendipity to inform the design of a pervasive interactive space split across desktop, mobile and public spaces with the aim of enabling academic researchers who might not have otherwise met to meet and enabling them to have new research ideas that they might not otherwise have had. The problem is, I believe the idea of designing for serendipity is an oxymoron as much of the unexpectedness or insight involved in the experience may disappear once it's been engineered into an interactive system. So I would suggest shifting focus away from trying to facilitate serendipity and towards trying to facilitate valuable connections between people to create connection opportunities between people and information. And we hope, but cannot guarantee, that they would not have made these connections otherwise. So in social networking, imagine LinkedIn looking at the employment history of a user who's looking to change careers, but is not exactly sure which career to choose, and making suggestions for contacts in new areas that the, might, that the user might not have otherwise thought of. Or imagine digital libraries providing non-obvious suggestions for papers that might interest a user perhaps for papers from a different discipline but with several shared citations, papers on a different topic but adopting a thim similar methodology, or papers on similar topics from journals a user has never accessed before. So now let's bring many of these design recommendations together to suggest what digital information and resources of the future might do for us. My information resources of the future would allow users to obtain documents either through actively searching or browsing or through passive discovery. In my resources of the future, users will be able to acquire, interpret and make use of the information they have obtained within the same interface. They will be able to highlight and annotate parts of documents and store these sections or entire documents in a personal vault for later use. In my digital information resources of the future, Reference lists of documents cited and those saved in the vault will be automatically created and suggestions made for other potentially interesting documents based not only on the current paper accessed but on those saved in the vault. Suggestions might also be made for documents that a user might be interested in but might not yet know that they are interested in. Finally, in my digital information resources of the future, papers or individual snippets of papers can be discussed and shared easily within a collaborative environment and in other ways such as by email and via social networking tools. Users will be able to collaborate together not just in writing documents but in obtaining and helping each other to interpret them.